Today, I will be working on my 1989 K1500. Every time I fill up, fuel splashes, sometimes on my feet. So I'm going to look into it and see what the cause is. I suspect it's the filler neck. This is the view from the driver's side rear wheel well facing forward. Here you can see the filler neck and the filler tube. Here I'm just going to loosen the hose clamp so that I can remove the filler neck. All right, let's see if that's loose enough. This is when I first noticed that part of the vent tube that went to the top of the fuel tank wasn't connected. Here I came back to the side of the truck to disconnect the filler neck shroud. This will make it easier to remove the filler neck. These screws are removed using a Torx bit. I removed one screw that I didn't need to. It went to the hinge for the fuel door. The top screw was turning, but it wasn't moving in the fastener. They were rusted together, but since it broke the plastic off, it did free the fuel shroud. With the shroud free, it gave me a few more degrees of freedom to wiggle out the filler neck. I had a brand new filler neck ready for when I pulled the old one out. But as I inspected the old one, I didn't see any spots where it was leaking. So I turned my attention elsewhere and it became pretty obvious where the leak was coming from. This is part of the vent tube that goes from the filler neck to the top of the fuel tank. And when I removed the filler neck, this end wasn't connected to anything. So maybe this is where the leak was coming from. I took the rubber tubing off of the metal tubing and it became obvious that this section of tubing was not the way the truck came. At some point somebody had put in a quick fix as a, as a band-aid solution. So this is where the end of the filler tube goes. And this open tube is where the pipe that I pulled out came from. Now it wasn't connected, it was broken. So you can see how far in it goes. It's hard to get to. So I can understand why somebody wouldn't want to fix it the right way, but it's making it fun for me. That's the only way to get there is to either drop the fuel tank or lift the bed. I have not decided what I want to do yet. That deteriorated tube that is broken off in the center of the picture there is definitely the vent tube. And that's almost certainly where the fuel was leaking from every time I filled up. See that hose clamp up there? It's almost an impossible angle. I'm going to see if I can get a socket on there and take it off and pull the vent tube off. Unfortunately, I will not be able to get that on camera, but I'll give it a shot. As it turns out, I am able to get my little eight millimeter wrench on that hose clamp. So I'm gonna uh, try and get that tube off. Now getting it on may be another story, but can't get the camera in there while I'm doing it, but there it is. I was able to get the hose clamp off the hose, but the hose is another story. It's stuck on the fuel pump. So I'm going to have to drop the fuel tank. I got my jack under here. 
and I'm undoing the straps now. So I'm going to do that and hopefully I'll be able to get that tube off. While I was removing the strap that holds the front of the fuel tank up, the stud broke. So now I have to take the bracket that that strap is attached to off in order to fix it. This bracket is attached to the frame just below the filler neck. It has four studs that stick through the frame and are held on with four nuts. I thought I'd share this because it's funny. As I am lowering the fuel tank, here's the hose clamp. I suspect someone was working on it, dropped it and said, you know, forget about it. But maybe not using those words. So the fuel tank is down far enough for me to see the condition of that tube. And I'll be honest with you, it's going to be tough for me to take that tube off and call it good after I replace it, after seeing the condition of everything else under here. But it, everything under here works just fine. So I don't know what I'm going to do. Decisions, decisions. I settled on some new parts and some parts from the junkyard. These are the parts I ended up with to fix the issues I was having with the fuel tank. I decided to reuse the existing filler neck because, as it turns out, this wasn't the problem. And I could save money by returning the new one. I went to the junkyard and picked up a new filler neck shroud. The old one had broken tabs and was missing fasteners, so I also got all the associated fasteners. And I got all the tubing associated with the vent tube. This tubing goes from the fuel tank to the filler neck. This goes to the top of the filler neck. That's a brand new OEM GM part that I ordered online. I got extra tubing from a local auto parts store just in case. And these four parts here came in a kit from a company called Philonex Supply Company out of Spokane, Washington. And I also got new fuel tank straps. So hopefully this will be a straightforward install. I assembled the vent tube and the filler neck as much as I could before I got under the truck. This made it easier once it was time to put everything back together. After taking a closer look at a couple of things and realizing how hard it was going to be to wrap the new strap around the fuel tank, I thought it best just to go ahead and disconnect the whole tank, get it out in the open, clean it up a little bit, and then reinstall it. So I'm going to disconnect that connector there, disconnect those lines, and the ground strap, and just go ahead and slide it out into the open. Got the fuel tank out of the garage, rolled it out to the sunlight. I'm gonna see how bad the tubing coming from the fuel pump is and if I need to replace it because I do see a lot of rust. I'm gonna use a wire brush to clean it off and see if there's material loss. If there's significant material loss, I might as well go ahead and replace it. That means ordering the part and waiting a while, but let's see. While it doesn't look great, I think I have years, if not decades of use out of, out of that pump as long as it keeps working. The tubing seems like it'll last, again, years or decades. So now I'm gonna turn my attention to the plastic. I think something was living in here, so 
Let's see what's in there. There was tons of debris and acorn remnants between the plastic and the fuel tank. I'm convinced a little animal at least hung out there for a little while. It was dirty enough for me to decide to pull out the pressure washer and give it a once over. It felt good getting rid of years of buildup. Like usual, I'm learning as I go. So this is the end of the frontmost fuel tank strap where the bolt broke off when I was taking it apart. So I ordered a new strap, which is here. Now this end looks all good, but this end will be a problem. This is the bracket that mounts to the frame here and connects to the fuel tank strap. It is riveted to this bracket. So I'm going to have to figure out how to connect the new one to it. I'll probably just drill it out and either get some bolts and the nuts to connect it or I'll just rivet it in. Let's see if I can drill out these rivets. All right, so now I got those out, I'm gonna hunt through my little junk bin and see if I have a nut and bolt combo that'll work for that. As it turns out, I'm in luck. I have these eight millimeter bolts and nuts to match, and it looks like they'll work. And the heads of these screws is below that, so I think I think that'll work. I hope wrapping this around the fuel tank before I get it back under the truck is the right move. We will see. I'm gonna turn this around so you can see what I'm doing. The fuel tank strap did not come bent, so you have to kind of bend it and form it to the fuel tank. So I'm hoping that I can get it in there. Okay. That took some convincing, but yeah, after doing it, I realized that is the right move. So this is the bracket that the strap mounts to. So here we are with the nut underneath. And I'm going to start, I got a few threads started, so I'm just gonna go ahead and um, I'm gonna go ahead and crank it down. All right, I think that's good enough. I'll tighten it the rest of the way when it's under the truck and I have more clearance to get on there with the ratchet. The strap that holds up the rear of the fuel tank is a lot easier to get started. I know it's not always possible, but if you're doing something like this and you can drain the fuel, do it. I'm having to wrestle with the fuel tank because there's so much fuel in it. I would prefer to not have to use two jacks just to position it. So I got the fuel tank positioned enough to get the filler neck and the vent tubes on. It really helped that I put a little bit of oil on inside the, the tubing because you don't have a lot of space to slide it on, but that decreased the resistance. So I got it on and now I just gotta jack the fuel tank up the rest of the way and then I'll connect the filler neck 
to the shroud up top. So I got the fuel tank back up and I was able to get the, the bracket mounted. I still have to tighten them up. But I'm gonna tighten them up and then wrap the straps and connect the filler neck. Wrapping the rearmost strap around the tank took about as much force as the one in the front. But it was a little easier because I could position it and then use a jack to push it the rest of the way so that I could start the threads. All right, so I went to replace the, the shroud, take out this old fastener and it is rusted together. So I'm gonna figure out how to get this off. All right, I ended up cutting off the fastener that was there because I couldn't get a good grip on it to turn it out. And I got my wife to help and it just stripped out. So now I can finally put the shroud on. So next I have to put this filler tube on two. That large opening in the fuel tank you see there, and you can see I got all the new stuff fastened, and you can see the area that was previously broken is now one continuous rubber hose. I won't be able to get the camera in there while I do this, but I'll put the filler tube on, and hopefully it'll be easy to connect it to the filler neck. When I took the fuel tank out, this clamp that fastens the rubber filler tube to the tank wasn't installed. And it is difficult to get to, but if you have a quarter inch drive extension and a screwdriver with a little socket, you can get through it through here. So this is, this is the frame and this is the fuel tank. So. I will use an extension to get to it. And just a tip, I wish somebody would have told me this. So if you're watching this and you're doing this, hopefully that'll help. I connected the filler neck to the filler two. And from there, it's pretty easy. You just have to connect the shroud to the filler neck and you're done. Now I did have to make some adjustments to the filler shroud so that I could line up the filler neck easier. But after that, that was it. And the last thing I did was ground the filler neck. So now I'm looking forward to the first fill up where fuel doesn't splash all over the ground. And I'm happy to report that the wiper motor repair I did in a previous video works great. This is a first drive where I actually got to use it in some light rain. This truck still needs a lot of work. And if you'd like to keep up with everything I do, hit subscribe. Thanks for watching. Take care.